Okay, uh, I guess I'll get started. Uh, I hope everyone can hear me okay in the room. Um, I'm David Disseldorp from SUSE, and I'm here to speak about uh, kernel testing. Um, yeah, so just a quick background on this project. Um, it basically started as an itch to scratch, so um, I was kind of frustrated with how how quickly I was, or the pace of development um, I had with, with uh, kernel work. Um, so I have a, a user space background. I'm used to sort of, you know, typing make, being able to immediately run whatever um, I'm working on. Um, in the kernel, this turned out to yeah, be quite frustrating in that, you know, I would make changes, copy it over to some, some box or VM, uh, reboot the VM, uh, run my test code, potentially run the same kernel on multiple boxes if I want to test something networked. Uh, this was just sort of taking way too long. I was uh, just not happy with how productive I was um, in the kernel. So with that, or with that frustration, I sort of looked around at um, what other people had done, um, found that uh, so QEMU KVM does support um, booting directly from a kernel um, BZ image. You can give it a, an init, init RAMFS image uh, alongside that, and it will then basically bypass the bootloader, um, yeah, run or just basically boot straight up to that, that kernel. So uh, that looked promising. This was a way to, yeah, um, have a much more immediate um, turnaround in, in the, the work I was doing. Uh, there was still sort of the challenge of then um, generating this init RAMFS image, um, and then things like uh, networking from there. So, you know, if I'm testing alongside other network components, I want to be able to plumb them into uh, the same virtual machine. Another handy um, yeah, utility with uh, QEMU is that you can just give it this uh, no graphic parameter and then it will basically redirect everything to the, the console. So basically where you're starting QEMU KVM, you'll then see um, everything that's output by the uh, virtual machine serial console. So the, the challenge of init RAM FS generation, um, this is something uh, I want to be able to do also, very quickly, I want to say, okay, this is what I need in my, my test system. Um, this is where it is. Uh, make me a, an init RAMFS image with that. This is already luckily um, yeah, done on basically all Linux systems in that we have this init RAMFS as uh, something to bring the, the root file system up while booting. So we have this tool called uh, Dracket. Um, it's already there on, on OpenSUSE, Lee, on uh, many, many other systems, Fedora. Um, uh, it's, it's quite flexible in that you can then um, just give it a list of binaries. Um, it will then work out what sort of library dependencies are there, um, pull everything in. You can give it a list of, of kernel modules. Um, you can also plumb into um, basically the, the boot path and run your own code. Um, so there are a number of ways to do that. Um, you can basically write, uh, I think, what's called an emergency module in that if you don't have a root file system to bring up, then it, it jumps into this emergency module. Um, this is, yeah, everything I need basically on the, the inner MFS side. So just looking at then, or yeah, graphical rec uh, representation of um, everything I need from, from Dracket, um, I'm feeding in my uh, binary dependencies for, for testing, so um, you know something like uh, FS test, the XFS test suite. Um, I have a whole heap of you know um, file system tools and utilities which are needed by this test suite. Um, so I have a, a list of dependencies for that. I can pull in then the, the test suite itself, so I can just point drag it at at a specific directory, and it will just copy uh, that entire directory into the init RAMFS image. I can then also um, pull in my kernel modules from my kernel source. So basically, yeah, in my case, I've, I've already built the kernel, uh, the kernel I want to test. Um, I just tell Drake it um, where those modules are installed. It will go ahead and, and pull the kernel modules in. 
And at the end, I get this nifty little um, init RAM FS image, which is normally you know, uh, 10 to 60 megabytes with, with everything I need for testing. Um, I, I give QEMU the image itself and uh, the, the kernel that's been built. And um, yeah, it does all the magic and, and boots it. So the next challenge was then um, networking. This uh, came about with uh, Ceph. So I was looking at um, working on um, Ceph Rados Block Device and CephFS, um, both of which are, are in kernel. So here I have um, potentially a Ceph cluster I'd like to, to connect to from this, this kernel. So I can do that then just using a, a simple bridge setup. Um, in this case, I was running the Ceph cluster or virtual Ceph cluster on my laptop already, so um, I could just plumb those um, kernel virtual machines into uh, my bridge and everything's good to go. On the, um, yeah, the IP or network configuration side on the VMs, um, there's also a, a handy little parameter which um, is normally used for booting from NFS root, um, which is this IP parameter. And with that, I can specify a static IP or um, ask it to, to try DHCP at the boot time for the kernel. Uh, so now on to, to Rapido. Um, basically, I had just a whole collection of these dirty scripts lying around, which you know built certain images and booted or you know set up network in a certain way that I needed for testing. I then thought, okay, there's or well, this may then potentially be, be helpful for others, so I might as well just wrap some scripts around it um, and put it into a repo somewhere. So uh, this is where Rapido came about. Um, really, it's just yeah, very very much brain dead uh, wrapper scripts around um, Dracut and QEMU. Um, we have what's called a, a cut script, so that is is calling Dracut with all of the dependencies I need for for testing. Um, so basically for each, um, each test target, so say um, local file system testing or CephFS testing, CephRBD, I would have a separate um, cut script um, which then handles the uh, image generation via Dracut. Um, there's the auto run script. Uh, this is the script that then uh, is run when the virtual machine is booting, so generally um, yeah, as the, as the VM's coming up, I want to jump straight into my, my test uh, so I can potentially just plumb whatever I want in there for testing. And I have just a simple VMSH, which is, um, yeah, just calling QEMU KVM. For configuration, um, I put everything into a, a global uh, rapido.conf file. Um, yeah, at a minimum, all you need in there is, is just uh, to, to define where your kernel source is. Um, pretty much everything else can be um, yeah, derived from, from that. Uh, we do have, or if you are bringing up a, a VM with a uh, requirement for network, then there are some uh, parameters for setting uh, you know, the static IP address. Um, you can do things like set up a, a DHCP server and, and have the VMs boot from that. Uh, are there also then within Rapido a number of other um, yeah just helper scripts for setting up network provisioning um, RAM disks so uh, compressed RAM disks and yeah with that I guess I'll, I'll move on to a demo um, <clears throat> so if if anyone has their laptop around and they have a kernel source then feel free to to sort of play along. <laughs> Booth babe. Thank you, Craig. Um, so this should be, yeah, good. So here is um, my Rapido source directory. Um, you'll notice there are just a bunch of, of cut scripts and a bunch of auto run scripts. I basically then, as mentioned earlier, have a, a cut script for, for each um, testable component or test target that I, I wish to test. Um, over here, 
in the other window, I have um, just a, a regular kernel source tree. Um, so at the moment I have um, kernel yeah, 4.11.1 checked out. So from there I can just go ahead and build my kernel. Um, I built it earlier, so um, there's really nothing to do. Um, I'll go ahead and, and make, install those modules. So this is just um, installing the modules in a subdirectory under the, the kernel source. Um, and then I'll, I'll basically be pointing a bracket at that directory. So now on to Rapido. <coughs> So for the first test, I just wanted to, to run through um, local file system testing. So um, for that, um, I hope you're aware of the, the FS tests or XFS tests test suite. Um, that has yeah, hundreds of, of um, local file system tests, um, really quite helpful for, for stressing a, a kernel. So with that, um, I'll go ahead and create my image. Um, FS tests local. So that's, that's the image generation component. Um, if we take a look at the script itself, uh, here we can see, oh, this is, sorry, on file. Cut, this test local. So here we can see um, all we have is basically a call to Dracut. Um, the install uh, parameter there just lists all of the dependencies I have for this test or for this uh, test suite. I'm including the FS test source, so I'm just dumping the entire source for FS tests into the, the image. I'm also pulling in um, some uh, kernel modules, so the ZRAM um, kernel modules and some DM modules. Um, they're, they're used for uh, provisioning basically a, a compressed block block device within the virtual machine. And finally, down the bottom here, um, I have uh, just some resource requirements for the VM. So this basically says, okay, the, the VM that I'm bringing up is uh, networkless, um, and I'd like a VM with uh, two, C two virtual CPUs and, and two gig uh, memory. So XFS tests is, is quite, um, yeah, memory intense. Uh, normally, uh, Rapido just brings up um, 512 uh, meg VMs. So with that, um, I'll go ahead. Um, I hope people are timing sort of the, the boot time here. But um, this is then just booting immediately from that, that image and uh, the kernel that I, I just compiled. And with that, um, the VM comes up in, in a matter of seconds. Um, you can see above that I've um, provisioned some, some block devices and um, done makefs, xfs on that. Um, normally I would want it to immediately run my um, file system tests um, without switching to a prompt, but just to show that you can sort of muck around with your own uh, VM once it's up. Uh, we can then just jump into the fs test directory. Um, I already have the um, test target file systems mounted, so I can just go ahead and just run, check, whoop, uh, just run the auto group. So this is then just starting the test suite now. Um, so that's running on the, the kernel, which was just, uh, just compiled. Um, yeah, basically the turnaround is sort of a matter of seconds going from this compiled kernel into um, the running test suite. So I can just end that, shut down the VM. And um, with that, now I wanted to show you, oh, actually, are there, there are any questions at this stage? Um, otherwise, I'll move on to yeah, sort of a, a little more advanced um, test in that I'd like to test now the, the SIFS kernel module. And for the SIFS kernel module, I need then an SMB server. Um, in my case, I'd like to test against, against Windows in this case. Um, so I'll, I'll bring up my SMB server. Um, uh, 
so that I can find my mouse. Ah, helps if I bring up the network first. So down here, I'll just run the VR setup script. And what that then does is um, creates these two um, tap devices or virtual devices down there and a, a BR0 bridge device. And the VM then that I'm starting is just plumbed into this bridge here. So while that VM boots, um, we can take another look at um, just the uh, regular Rapido configuration file. I didn't really go through that earlier. But here we have um, yeah, the top, the two most important parameters, um, which is uh, just pointing Rapido at your kernel source directory. After that, we have um, just the uh, regular network settings, um, which are needed if your VM is coming up on the network. Um, we have uh, yeah, more, so MAC address, um, IP address for each VM. Um, with Ceph, we have a, a separate section for Ceph configuration. In this case, I'm running against a, an SMB server. Um, so I'm using the SIFS kernel client um, to mount a share on that um, SMB server. So here you'll see that I have um, just the credentials to, to basically connect to that SMB share. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the question was, do I use, or what do I use to, to store the test results? So the, um, for, for accessing the test results, there are a couple of options. Normally I just pass the output of the serial console. Um, but another option is to, uh, if you do want persistent storage to store, say, logs or test results, then normally I just connect a, a file or um, RAM disk to the virtual machine as it's coming up. So just, uh, and then just use that for, for storage um, on the VM itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's another option. You could use NFS or SCP, whatever you, you'd like to get the, the results or, or the test results or logs off the VM. Um, yeah, with that, I'll, I'll bring up the, the SIFS kernel client VM now. So I can just go ahead and um, cut um, FS test SIFS. So this is then just generating an, an, another uh, image with um, all of the requirements or dependencies for SIFS testing. I'll go ahead and boot. Um, so on boot, this will then mount the SMB server on the Windows VM that I just brought up. Um, so it takes a little longer here in that it brings up the network uh, while the VM is booting. So it's you know, three seconds instead of um, one second. Uh, but here we can see, um, good, it's, it's uh, performed a, a mount of the SIF share there. We have um, yeah, the directory up. Um, it looks good. Um, we, of course, have a, an IP address within the VM. So this is just showing the, the network set up there. It's been assigned a, a static IP using this um, IP parameter for the kernel. And what I wanted to do was run um, a test that I prepared earlier. Um, let me just bring up my notes. So I have um, a test which uh, calls a specific um, ioctal in the SIFS kernel module. Um, this is a, an ioctal that then requests a, uh, a list of snapshots available on the SMB share. Um, so if I go ahead and issue this ioctal. Um, so the, the test code I have is just in the FS test source. Um, I'm just running that against a directory in the SMB share. And um, okay, we've hit uh, here a, a panic. Um, so this is a bug um, which I ran into while, while testing with, with Rapido. Um, we can see that um, we've hit a kernel panic in the um, do VFS ioctal. 
kernel path, so basically the SIFS ioctl path. Um, so let's now, now look at um, how we'd like to address uh, that bug. Um, so for starters, we can just go ahead and kill this VM. So the, the fix for this, oh. Thanks, so if we take a look um, just in the, uh, I just have a, a regular vanilla kernel source here. If I take a look at, um, at the log there, we should have, oop, actually. So we have in here, um, I, I've already pushed upstream the, the fix for this. Um, so this fix enumerate snapshots, oops. Um, so let's now consider that it's unfixed. Um, we'd like to test or play around with, with fixing this. Um, so what I'll do is just on my local branch here, just cherry pick that fix. So we've applied the fix. Um, now, obviously, I want to text, test that that fix works. So uh, I'll go ahead, um, build my kernel. Um, there's a very, very little change to the kernel, so it should be um, relatively quick to build. All done. Um, and now I just need to install those modules again. Um, so the sys module is built separately. With that, we can go ahead and create our init RAM FS and boot the VM. I hope someone's timing now because this is going from basically a broken kernel, applying a fix, um, rebuilding the kernel, and then testing the fix. Um, and I'll just run that test again. And you can see I've run exactly the same test, so this um, FS test shot um, against the directory in the SMB share, and this time we've just had a, a failed enum response um, back from or back to user space. So the panic is no longer there; the kernel's fixed. Um, we can then be relatively confident in in the change that we've made. Um, yeah, so that's that's the end of the demo. Um, I guess I'll move back on to the slides. Um, I think I have five minutes, so i got to whiz through the, the rest of it. Um, so, so as you saw in the Rapido source directory, um, I had yeah, a bunch of scripts for testing different kernel components. So basically, if you take a look yourself, you'll find um, hopefully something that sort of matches what you're looking at testing. Just feel free to adapt them um, as you need them. If you want to test a new kernel component, then please just make the changes and push them back into or submit a request to, to my repo. Um, there are some tests or test cases there for, as mentioned, um, local file system, CIFS, CFFS, CFRBD. Um, there's some, or there are some LIO tests. Um, uh, Johannes Termsen from, from SUSE Labs added the uh, NVMe over Fabrics um, test functionality. Some future challenges. Um, so, yeah, some things I'd sort of like to have in, in Rapido um, would be um, cross-distro support. So um, someone's worked on uh, running this within uh, uh, Debian. And, um, yeah, there are some issues which you ran into. Otherwise, it's mostly working, so I'd like to, to fix the issues um, found there. Some more test targets. So as mentioned, please um, submit anything you'd like to test. Um, yeah, some integration with CI would also be good in that any kernel changes we test potentially within OpenSUSE or SUSE, um, we run that quickly through some sort of CI utility. But 
otherwise, I think in its current state, it is, it is usable. It allows you to, to quickly and effectively test kernel changes. Um, Rapido itself is basically very little. It's, it's all based on uh, QEMU and Dracket, um, things which are already present or hopefully present on your system. So just go ahead and, and jump into kernel development. It's sort of nothing to be scared of. You really can just play around with your own sandpit and, and break, break your VMs. Uh, this allows you to, to test those changes very easily. So with that, um, guess that's it. Any questions? So the question is whether it publishes or generates the test results. Um, the test results themselves, or at this stage, um, everything is just dumped to um, the serial console. So as I mentioned earlier, you could mount an NFS share. Uh, you could just write it into a, a RAM disk connected to the VM. There are a number of options, but it doesn't sort of get in the way or um, yeah, handle any of that at this stage. Richard. Yeah, good, okay. Uh, two questions. Have you tried this with any sort of bigger kernel test suites like the LTP? Um, no, I haven't. Um, I've tested it with FS tests, which is in itself pretty huge. Um, there are still some, um, yeah, what, what appear to be potentially some environment issues with FS tests. So there are hundreds of, um, of tests there, um, which, uh, yeah, need to be sort of evaluated. Um, no, I haven't tested LTP or... Um, and and so my second question, and it's also kind of a follow-up to his, have you thought about integrating this with something like OpenQA to handle, like, the publishing of the results side of things? Um, integration with OpenQA, I think there's, there's a lot of overlap in what OpenQA already does. It's more, or at least as I see it, it's more um, UI-oriented. Um, okay. Um, sorry. Um, I, I think that's actually a different scope because this is for a quick testing if your newly developed kernel feature is actually working, if there's a direct regression. Um, LTP runs so long that booting the machine is not a problem. But if you're doing a quick bisection or something like that, where you're really installing the kernel, booting, waiting until you're through the BIOS or with a big server until it has counted its memory and stuff, this makes really a difference. I mean, no, but I, I would say this is also aimed at longer running tests. So we do actually use, so within the storage team at SUSE, we do use it for longer running um, regression tests. Okay. Um, it's, it's an option, it's just you can use it how you want to use it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, you know, we're running OpenQA with LTP, and there we're not running like the really long LTP. We're splitting it up into many, many chunks and diver you know, diverging it all over OpenQA. In that case, the boot time, handling all the VMs, you know, it's meaningless nonsense, really, that we do just because that's how OpenQA normally does it. Most of your solution here is actually really well aligned with everything we do in OpenQA, so I can like see the possibility of ma you know, mangling the two together in some ways, possibly. Are you planning support for other architectures? Uh, at this stage, uh, so someone tested it on, I think it was S390. Um, there are some issues, so uh, yes, I would, I would like to get it um, to a point where it can be run on ARM or um, S390, whatever other architectures are out there. And the same question to cross-compilation environments? Um, so <laughs> compilation is mostly or at least for now, it's not the job of Rapido. It, Rapido just handles image generation and, um, yeah, booting the VM. So uh, I'd like to sort of steer clear of anything that sort of involves uh, compiling tools or utilities, um, things yeah. like that at this stage. Uh, no, I, I just meant that you can, like, test a different architecture on your laptop. You can test the ARM64 virtual machine with the kernels modules on your laptop so as you tool. as you say you would have to handle the the cross compilation yourself um, 
Yeah, look, I, I think it's something worth worth looking into. Um, yeah, maybe we could could get it to a point where it um, it fits nicely, but otherwise, yeah. Yeah, uh, that looks like we're three minutes over time, so um, thanks everyone.